Officially, MKUltra, the USA CIA mind control program, began on 13 April 1953. The study led by Sidney Gottlieb, appointed by CIA Director Alan Dulles who approved the project. This was formally claimed to be in response to Korean and Chinese techniques being used against American prisoners of war in order to gain a confession. MKUltra appears to be grounded not only in the work of Allied and Tavistock-affiliated scientists, but also in World War II experiments performed by Nazi scientists, doctors and psychiatrists who escaped Nuremberg and were brought to America in Operation Paperclip. In 1946, President Truman authorized Operation Paperclip to exploit the expertise of German scientists for American research and to deny these intellectual resources to the Soviet Union. A 1999 report to the U.S. Senate stated that between 1945 and 1955, 765 scientists, engineers and technicians were brought to the U.S. under Paperclip and similar programs. Some of the reports bluntly pointed out that those helped to escape justice were ardent Nazis, experts accused of participating in murderous medical experiments on human subjects at concentration camps. Other researchers have placed the number of liberated German scientists much higher. Over 1,000 German scientists were secretly brought into the U.S. without State Department approval. The most famous individual brought over in this manner was Werner von Braun, the rocket scientist. Von Braun was the head of the German V-2 rocket program. It is alleged that von Braun's file, which proclaimed him as an ardent Nazi, simply had the word not supplanted in front of this opening sentence, in order to make him appear to be a suitable candidate for gainful employment by NASA. The MK and MK Ultra allegedly originates from the German words for mind control, mining's control. If this is true, it is a very fitting explanation for the cruelty involved in the project, although Sidney Gottlieb suggested the name was nothing to do with Germany and simply a coded filing system. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you'd learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. In 1994, a report concerning the MK Ultra program was issued, containing the following information. In the 1950s and 60s, the CIA engaged in an extensive program of human experimentation, using drugs, psychological, and other means, in search of techniques to control human behavior for counterintelligence and covert action purposes. This report then clarified the CIA's actions in attempting to keep the projects clandestine. In 1973, the CIA purposefully destroyed most of the MK Ultra files concerning its research and testing on human behavior. In 1977, the agency uncovered additional MK Ultra files in the budget and fiscal records that were not indexed under the name MK Ultra. These documents detailed over 150 sub-projects that the CIA funded in this area, but no evidence was uncovered at that time concerning the use of radiation. The CIA did investigate the use and effect of microwaves on human beings in response to a Soviet practice of beaming microwaves on the U.S. Embassy. The agency determined that this was outside the scope of the advisory committee's purview. The report also highlighted that, in order to maintain secrecy in all stages of the projects, documentation was purposefully kept to a bare minimum. The Church Committee found some records, but also noted that the practice of MK Ultra at that time was to maintain no records of the planning and approval of test programs. MK Ultra itself was technically closed out in 1964, but some of its work was transferred to the Office of Research and Development within the DSNT under the name MK Search and continued into the 1970s. The CIA worked closely with the Army in conducting the LSD experiments. This connection with the Army is significant because MK Ultra began at the same time that Secretary of Defense Wilson issued his 1953 directive to the military services on ethical guidelines for human experiments. Throughout the course of MK Ultra, the CIA sponsored numerous experiments on unwitting humans. 
After the death of one such individual, Frank Olson, an army scientist, was given LSD in 1953 and committed suicide a week later. An internal CIA investigation warned about the dangers of such experimentation. The CIA persisted in this practice for at least the next 10 years. After the 1963 Inspector General report recommended termination of unwitting testing, Deputy Director for Plans Richard Helms, who later became Director of Central Intelligence, continued to advocate covert testing, on the ground that positive operational capability to use drugs is diminishing, owing to a lack of realistic testing. With increasing knowledge of state-of-the-art, we are less capable of staying up with the Soviet advances in this field. Helms attributed the cessation of the unwitting testing to the high risk of embarrassment to the agency, as well as the moral problem. He noted that no better covert situation had been devised than that which had been used, and that we have no answer to the moral issue. In the UK, the entity that is alleged to shape the social order of the world as we are led to see it, is known as the Tavistock Institute. The Tavistock Institute of Human Relations is a charity organization concerned with social control and applying psychological warfare methods to countries in order to create dissent, fear, and reduce morale. It officially began its operations in the UK in 1921. In 1932, Tavistock was put under the directorship of Kurt Lewin, a German psychiatrist, and later, a founder member of the OSS, the precursor to the CIA. Lewin was primarily interested in the mass brainwashing of whole populations by applying repeated trauma and torture to society at large. By amazing coincidence, this appears to be a remarkably similar time to the beginnings of Nazi interest in mind control. The Tavistock Clinic in London, where many of the Institute's methodologies were crafted, was founded in 1920 by Dr. Hugh Crichton Miller, a psychiatrist who developed psychological treatments for shell-shocked soldiers during and after the First World War. During World War II, several Tavistock staff members served in the UK Armed Forces. John Rawlings Rees becoming Chief of Army Psychiatric Services, and G. R. Hargreaves being appointed as Assistant Director of Army Psychiatry. Through Tavistock they brought together such eminent names in the field of social psychology as Bjorn, Balby, Bridger, Dix, Falkes, Kellner, McKeith, Maine, Morris, Philipson, Rickman, Roger, and Whitcoer, forming what Rees referred to as an invisible college. The group began working on producing the most effective methods of officer selection, training, inducing or reducing morale, civil resettlement, therapeutic communities, and group therapy. In 1946, some of these social psychologists went on to form the Tavistock Institute of Human Relations, an interdisciplinary group interested in the problems of initiating change in large organizations and society. This group also established a journal, Human Relations, and publishing house, Tavistock Publications Limited. Tavistock created the Family Discussion Bureau and Tavistock Marital Studies Institute, and in the Tavistock Clinic, they also established a unit for adolescents. Tavistock certainly seems to have a hand in the development of nearly all areas of society. Mind control researcher and author Jim Keith summarized, Tavistock, a collaborative effort of British military intelligence and the psychiatric establishment was created in 1921, reportedly on the orders of members of the Royal Institute of International Affairs, also known as Chatham House. The RII is an arm of the British Rhodes Round Table Group, founded by British imperialist and Freemason Cecil Rhodes. The Round Table, functioning through a myriad of offshoots, has been this century's most effective proponent for the creation of a one-world government. Avistock relies on grants for its operation from the Rockefellers, Carnegie's, the British Home Office, and large anonymous grants. Initially run by British military intelligence officer Major John Rawlings, from its inception, Tavistock was intended as a coordinating center for planetary social control, using psychological shock troops, a term coined by Rees.